welcome to the fifth lesson in our series on motion in one dimension. In the past four lessons, we have spent time looking specifically at vertical projectile motion and the relevant graphs of motion and equations of motion. In this lesson, we will explore momentum and impulse. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe and calculate momentum and change in momentum. You should be able to define the law of conservation of momentum and explain and calculate impulse in terms of external forces acting over time. Heavy military equipment is a perfect example of how momentum works. Since the beginning of the 20th century, there have been many wars. Some are better known than others, like World War I and World War II, Vietnam and more recently America's war in the Gulf and Afghanistan. Further back in history, wars were fought using hand-to-hand -hand combat. Men faced each other at close range with horses, swords and pistols. The beginning of the 1900s saw dramatic changes in the design and manufacture of more effective fighting machines with far longer ranges. We'll examine tanks during today's lesson. World War I was characterized by trench warfare. In response to this, the British developed the tank. Colonel N.S. Swinton and Maurice Hankey, Secretary of the Committee for Imperial Defense, promoted the idea of such an armored vehicle. Early versions of this type of tank were already in use, with conveyor belt-like tracks over the wheels. The purpose of this vehicle was to cross difficult territory and to break through enemy lines while machine guns fired at them from the trenches. Winston Churchill, who was the British Navy minister at the time, approved of this type of vehicle, and a prototype was soon developed. The tanks had to be manufactured in secret, so production workers were allegedly told they were building vehicles to carry water onto the battlefields. These new vehicles were shipped across the English Channel in crates labeled tank, and that's how the name was born. Big Willie was first used in battle in 1916, and in 1917, improvements in design led to the Mark IV tank. Tanks transformed military battlefields and the techniques of war. In the next two lessons, we are going to explore the operation of a tank's main gun. This will help us to understand momentum and force. Ammunition is loaded into the main gun before it is fired. Modern tanks use special armor piercing ammunition like these shells. Now watch carefully as this tank gun is loaded and then fired. Before the gun is fired, the ammunition or projectile is stationary. When the gun is fired, the projectile moves at 1,575 meters per second. With this information, we can calculate the projectile change in momentum. But first, we need to know the mass of the projectile. The projectile's mass is 34,5 kilograms. The initial velocity is 0 meters per second. The final velocity is 1,575 meters per second. Before we do the calculation, I'm sure you have some ideas about how we define the momentum of an object. That's right. Momentum is defined as the product of an object's mass and its velocity. It is given by the equation P is equal to mass times velocity, where P is the momentum measured in kilogram meters per second. M is the mass of the object measured in kilograms. And V is the velocity measured in meters per second. The mass of an object is constant. So when the momentum of an object changes, it can only be because the velocity changed. To calculate the change in momentum of an object, we can use the equation Change in momentum is equal to mass times change in velocity. Here we can see that change in momentum is equal to mass times final velocity minus initial velocity. Using the forward direction of the projectile as the positive direction, we can now calculate the projectile's change in momentum. The projectile's change in momentum is equal to the mass 
34.5 times the final velocity, which was 1,575 minus zero, minus the initial velocity. This equals positive 54,337,5 kilogram meters per second. So the change in momentum is in the forward direction. Momentum is a vector, so we must give the direction in words. Now back to the gun firing. Notice that as the gun fires, the projectile moves forward, but the tank's main gun moves backwards. This backward motion is known as the gun's recoil and is a result of the fact that momentum is always conserved. Do you remember the law of conservation of momentum? The law of conservation of momentum states that in an isolated system, the total momentum of a system is conserved. In simpler terms, this means that when two objects collide with each other, like two cars in an accident or the parts of the tank gun, the total momentum before the collision or explosion is equal to the total momentum after the collision or explosion. Let's relate this to our tank. The gun has a mass of 2,500 kilograms and the projectile has a mass of 34,5 kilograms. Remember that the tank and the projectile are both stationary before the gun fires and then the projectile moves out of the gun at 1,500 in 75 meters per second. This information helps us to calculate the velocity of the gun as the projectile leaves it. First, we'll make a list of all the information we know. The projectile's mass is 34,5 kilograms and the gun's mass is 2,500 kilograms. Both the projectile and the gun are stationary to begin with, so their initial velocities are zero meters per second. The projectile moves off at 1,575 meters per second. The projectile's motion is the positive direction. And we want to calculate the velocity of the gun. According to the law of conservation of momentum, the total momentum, P before the explosion, is equal to the total momentum after the explosion. This means that the mass of the projectile times its initial velocity plus the mass of the gun times its initial velocity is equal to the mass of the projectile times its final velocity plus the mass of the gun times its final velocity. So 34,5 times zero plus 2,500 times zero is equal to 34,5 times 1,575 plus 2,500 times the gun's final velocity. Notice, this equals zero, this equals zero. Therefore, zero is equal to 54,337,5 plus 2,500 times the gun's final velocity. Now let's see what happens when we solve for the gun's velocity. We can subtract this from both sides then divide by negative 2,500. So its velocity is negative 21,74. The gun is moving in the opposite direction to the projectile, just as we expected. Since we must always put our direction in words, the gun's final velocity is 21,74 meters per second recoil. Recoil simply means that the gun is moving in the opposite direction to the projectile as it leaves the gun. Do you notice the smoke coming from the gun? This is because there is an explosion inside the gun which propels the projectile out of the gun. This explosion is an external force on the projectile which acts over a specific time period. This force acting over this specific time is known as impulse. Impulse is given by the equation force applied times change in time equals the change in momentum, which is also equal to mass times change in velocity. This equation gives us a definition for impulse. Impulse is defined as the change in momentum of an object. The impulse experienced by the projectile and the gun must be equal in magnitude. Can you explain why? According to Newton's third law, if the gun exerts a force on the projectile, 
then the projectile must exert a force of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction on the gun. Also, the gun and the projectile are in contact with each other for the same amount of time while the force acts on both of them. Consider the equation again. If the force acting on the gun and the projectile is the same size and it acts for the same period of time, then the impulse experienced by both must be the same. However, impulse is a vector, therefore it has direction as well as magnitude. Although impulse is equal to change in momentum, it isn't measured in kilogram meters per second like momentum. Instead, impulse is measured in newton seconds. Let's go back to the gun on the tank. If the projectile experiences the force of the explosion for two and a half seconds, what is the force that pushes the projectile forward? Earlier, we calculated that the projectile's change in momentum was equal to 54,337,5 kilogram meters per second. But impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So force times change in time is equal to 54,000 337,5. The explosion takes two and a half seconds, so we can now substitute this into what we know. Therefore, force times 2,5 is equal to 54,337,5. We divide by 2,5 on both sides to solve for the force. Therefore, the force experienced by the projectile is 21,700 and 35 newtons in the forward direction. Now for your task. A truck with a mass of 4,500 kilograms traveling at 20 meters per second hits a car from behind. The car's mass is 1,000 kilograms and it was traveling at 15 meters per second. The two vehicles now connected carry on moving in the same direction. Question one. Calculate the final velocity of the truck and car combination after the collision. Question 2. If the collision lasts for 1,5 seconds, what is the force experienced by the car?